Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello friends, uh, I welcome you uh, to the lecture number 23 of the course titled Psychology of Stress, Health and Wellbeing. Uh, so, this is uh, second lecture of the module 8 and overall it is uh, 23rd lecture. So, before we uh, discuss about today's lecture, uh, let us have a brief uh, recap of the last lecture that is lecture number 22. So, in the last lecture, we have uh, addressed uh, the question that can we become happier or can we increase our happiness sustainably in a sustainable manner. So, in that context, uh, we have discussed that you know uh, there are some obstacles or barriers in increasing our happiness and you know uh, there are some possible you know sources of optimism also. So, in the last lecture, we have discussed particularly two specific barriers uh, uh, that uh, kind of creates obstacle in increasing our uh, happiness level or our sense of subjective well-being. Uh, and these two, uh, we have discussed two factors. One is called as genetic set point and another is called as hedonic adaptation. So, uh, genetic set point basically we in the in, in the context of genetic set point we have discussed that our genetic composition or genetics sets limits to our experiences including happiness uh, the experiences of, of our happiness and emotions. So, our genes you know determines you know, various characteristics including our physical characteristics and you know to some extent our uh, psychological characteristics and emotional experiences. So, we have discussed that our genetics set certain limits and also it creates a, a kind of baseline level of experiences of happiness. So, uh, and uh, you know that is that that kind of explains the stability of happiness in human beings. So, even though there are kind of temporary shifts in happy, happiness or we become maybe very sad, but ultimately we generally remain at the baseline level of happiness which differs from person to person. For some people, this baseline level of happiness may be a little higher, who are mostly you know express happiness in their life. So, for some people, it may be lower, uh, who express you know uh, most of the time their mood may, may be in the you know uh, in the lower side of you know, sadness. So, this baseline level of happiness is determined by our uh, to at least partially determined by our genetic set point or genetics. And, uh, Evidences for this uh, genetic set point was you know, given by twin studies, uh, where it was found uh, identical twins you know report similar type of similar level of happiness or similar type of emotional experiences, even though they are raised apart and uh, apart into different family background or environmental background. Uh, in the context of genetic set point, we have also discussed you know that you know genetics may influence our personality trait and personality trait seems to at least research indicate that you know it can influence our uh, subjective well-being happiness or emotional level particularly two personality traits we have discussed one is called extroversion and another is called as neuroticism uh, so extroversion was found to be uh, positively related to uh, subjective well-being or happiness and neuroticism was is generally found to be negatively associated with happiness or well-being. Uh, so, in that context you know our genetics may influence our personality traits which in turn may influence our experiences of happiness or emotional experiences. So, uh, these are some of the things that we have discussed in the last class in the context of genetic set point. The second important thing that we have discussed is uh, you know 
uh, which is a kind of barrier in terms of you know, increasing our level of happiness is hedonic adaptation. So, hedonic adaptation is more uh, like a psychological process uh, by which individual return to their baseline level of happiness uh, following uh, certain change, uh, following either positive or negative changes in their life circumstances. So, hedonic adaptation basically uh, talks about uh, the idea that you know people you know get adapted to changes in their life circumstances and uh, there may be shift in emotional experiences after positive or negative events in their life in, in the life, but we generally you know return to our baseline level of happiness because we get adapted to it and it may be more like psychological adaptation. So, this process is called as uh, hedonic adaptation which may be influenced by genetics also. And uh, we have discussed you know different functions of this hedonic adaptation particularly we said you know this hedonic adaptation protects us from prolonged uh, emotional uh, consequences or let us say if we experience for a prolonged time either positive or negative emotional experiences particularly negative emotional experience. Uh, it may be detrimental to our you know body and mind and we have discussed you know details about this in the, in the past few lectures. Uh, so, and also hedonic adaptation help us to disengage from the old goals. So, because our emotional consequences goes down we are able to disengage from goals which are no longer fruitful and we are able to engage into the newer stimuli and the goals. Uh, in the context of hedonic adaptation we have also discussed a model to explain how hedonic adaptation happens. Uh, it is called as uh, AREA model, area model proposed by uh, Wilson and Gilbert and uh, basically this talks about the process of hedonic adaptation and they say there are you know few sequential steps that happens uh, in the hedonic adaptation. One is we first pay attention, A is for attention and then we react emotionally R and then we try to explain or make sense of the event and this if we are able to make sense or explain the event then emotional consequences goes down and we are able to adapt. So, we have discussed the details of these processes. Uh, then at the end we have discussed you know that uh, hedonic adaptation is not exactly same for both positive events and negative events. Research generally shows that you know people uh, may not completely adapt to negative events in certain negative events such as you know severe disability or maybe unemployment or divorce some of the events uh, which uh, may have very strong impact uh, on us especially the negative event uh, people may not completely adapt to them and it takes more time to adapt to negative events. However, on the other hand positive events people generally adapt to all kinds of positive events and we adapt faster to positive events and we have discussed some of the possible uh, reasons behind it. So, today we will just continue from there and uh, we will discuss you know that uh, there may be some very strong barriers to increasing our happiness such as our genetics determine certain level of happiness. Hedonic adaptation you know kind of pulls us back to our baseline level of happiness uh, level. So, we are even though there may be temporary shifts, but we are not able to sustainably increase our level of happiness. So, the question is you know then uh, is the pursuit of happiness is a futile thing, I mean whatever we do ultimately we are kind of you know uh, doomed to come back to our baseline level of happiness. Then is it worth pursuing happiness in our life? So, we will try to explain the, or address this question in today's lecture, uh, particularly uh, by uh, discussing one model. Uh, of happiness which is called a sustainable happiness model proposed by you know, uh, Sonja and her colleagues. Uh, so, we will try to see you know what are the other aspects to it. So, in today's lecture we will uh, address uh, the issues such as you know is pursuit of happiness futile, uh, some sources of optimism for increasing happiness and we will discuss uh, sustainable happiness model. So, let us see uh, some of the important aspects to it. So, it is clear from the last lecture that you know certain strong barriers are there which uh, kinds of uh, you know creates barriers in sustainably increasing our happiness level such as genetic set point, personality factors and hedonic adaptation. Uh, 
Additionally, it was also found or we have discussed in the last lecture, you know, that hedonic adaptation is uh, more complete and faster in case of positive experiences. So, if, when we become happier because of some positive changes, we become very quickly we get adapted to them and we completely adapt to them. So, that means, you know, it is more difficult to sustain our happiness level or positive emotional state uh, because we get adapted to it very quickly. Uh, then the question is, is it then futile? Uh, to pursue happiness. Research shows that it is not futile uh, because uh, there are evidences that shows you know we can increase our sense of uh, happiness level or at least you know uh, in many evidences shows that there can be a sustainable increase in happiness level by pursuing certain uh, interventions or certain activities. So, uh, Leibomirsky or uh, Sonja Leibomirsky and her colleague uh, suggested some of the possible sources of uh, uh, optimism in the pursuit of happiness from uh, existing research literature. Uh, they, uh, they explained, they uh, discussed that some interventions for increasing happiness uh, seems to work as uh, practicing virtues such as gratitude for forgiveness etcetera. Uh, many research evidences shows that you know certain uh, intervention strategies to increase our happiness level uh, such as you know practicing uh, certain virtuous things such as gratitude, forgiveness etcetera actually increases our sense of happiness level and uh, to, uh, to, to a significant level. So, this is one uh, indication or proof that you know we can pursue uh, happiness or increase our sense of happiness level. Uh, uh, research also shows that you know many uh, motivational and attitudinal factors facilitates happiness and well-being uh, such as pursuing uh, intrinsically motivated goals and you know cultivating optimistic thinking. Uh, so, research also indicates that you know the certain uh, types of goal if you pursue that also in enhances our uh, level of happiness in a, in a sustainable way uh, and also practicing you know, optimistic thinking. Uh, these are some of the things that research indicates can be a valid intervention in terms of increasing happiness level. Many research uh, both cross sectional and uh, longitudinal uh, research indicates that older people tend to be happier than younger ones. At least recently some research indicate that uh, as people uh, progress uh, in their uh, in the life or especially in the older age, you know generally people uh, the level of subjective well-being or happiness seems to increase, let us say after 50s and 60s, uh, 60 years of life. Uh, so, that also indirectly indicates that happiness can increase, you know depending on uh, our you know our various attitudinal and volitional factors uh, which may change in the later life. So, these are some of the important indicators or some evidences or sources of optimism that shows that pursuit of happiness is not futile. Uh, there are uh, some possible intervention or activities that can be done to increase our sense of happiness or at least uh, positive emotional experiences. So, I mean uh, in the last lecture we have uh, discussed some very strong barriers in increasing happiness because these factors such as genetics, personality traits, hedonic adaptation seems to uh, uh, you know, create strong barriers in increasing happiness level and also we have seen some evidences that you know people can actually enhance their sense of happiness uh, by pursuing certain activities. So, there seems to be a paradox here. Uh, so, we will see uh, it is not a paradox actually and we will try to address uh, this issue uh, or this particular question can we become happier using a particular model of happiness which is called as sustainable happiness model. So, sustainable happiness model it is a model proposed by you know Leibomirsky, Sheldon and uh, uh, sketch, uh, sket, skede in 2005. Uh, so, they proposed a model and it was it is one of the very highly cited uh, paper where they proposed a model of happiness which is called a sustainable happiness model. So, they pe uh, specifically uh, uh, proposed three major you know 
determinants or causal factors of happiness. The three important factors that determines our happiness uh, level in our life. One is called as you know genetic set point, which we have discussed. Another is our life circumstances, and another factor is called as intentional activities. So they propose that these three important factors determine our level of happiness. So these these are important causal factors uh, that can you know influence our happiness level in our life. So, based on the past research into various populations, uh, they propose some approximate percentages contributed by these three factors, each of these factors in our life. Uh, so, they propose that you know based on the existing evidence in the population that approximately 50 percent of variance in happiness is accounted by genetic set point. So, about 50 percent is in the variance of happiness level can be explained by our genetic composition, about 10 percent by our life circumstances. Some of the evidence shows that about 10 to 15 percent can be explained by our life circumstances and uh, the proposed remaining 40 percent can be accounted by intentional activities. So, they said there are three important factors and they used a pie chart to show this uh, uh, three factors and their percentages. So, this pie chart is uh, somehow like this. So, so this is uh, about 50 percent is genetic set point so this one is life circumstances about 10 percent and remaining they said can be explained by intentional activities that we do in our life. So, this was uh, the pie chart by which they tried to explain these three important factors and their possible um, contributory percentages uh, in our happiness level. Uh, obviously, these percentages uh, were uh, you know, kind of criticized by many researchers that you know it is not appropriate to exactly pinpoint you know uh, the percentages which makes up our total happiness level and uh, they themselves also kind of says that these are indicative do not it may not be exactly 50, 10 or 40, but these are some of the indicative percentages. Uh, as reported by researcher in different populations. So, some criticisms are there, we will also discuss uh, what are the uh, some criticisms of this model uh, later, but uh, the idea is this uh, they basically talking about three important factors and their possible contribution. It may not be exactly these percentages, but this is what they showed in their model. So, uh, let us see uh, each of these factors and uh, how uh, they can uh, relate to our happiness level. So, set genetic set point we have already discussed in the last lecture uh, that it is one of the barriers actually because uh, it sets certain limits beyond that we cannot really jump much. Uh, so, set point is basically a, is a genetically determined and assumed to be fixed. Generally, it is fixed because you cannot really change your genetics. Uh, at least it is not easy to change and it is uh, that stable over time and immune to influences of control. So, generally you know genetic contribution you cannot really change and you do not have much control over it whatever genetics contributes. So, this is a set point that you know determines certain baseline level of happiness and we have already discussed you know there were many twin studies uh, evidences from various studies uh, shows that you know genetics plays very strong role in uh, determining our happiness level or subjective well being. So, evidences from uh, twin studies and personality traits provide support for this 
this component or stable component of happiness. So, um, all the studies found varying heritability, we have discussed the concept of heritability also in the last class, where the idea is that you know, uh, the percentage of or the, the variance of a particular trait in a population that can be explained by genetics is basically called as heritability. So, uh, different studies show different you know heritability coefficients uh, or percentages, so generally uh, they kind of uh, I know explained saying that you know by approximately 50 percent variance can be attributed to genetic composition. So, uh, uh, so at least about 50 percent can be explained by uh, or explained in our, in our subjective well-being or happiness by a genetic contribution. So, one aspect is genetic set point and it is generally fixed and stable we cannot really do much about it because you know genetics is generally beyond our control. The next factor uh, that uh, is there in the sustainable happiness model, which contributes to our happiness is our you know life circumstances. Now, life circumstances basically are kind of incidental, uh, but stable facts of our life. So, we are kind of born into different life circumstances. So, many circumstances are kind of we find ourselves in different circumstances once we take birth you know. Uh, for example, uh, the, re, uh, the place of your birth, uh, the kind of facilities, the kind of environmental situation, uh, the culture, uh, the cultural and geographic region in which you were birth. So, more lot of these uh, life circumstances are kind of given to us, most of them and we find ourselves in certain life circumstances. So, these are uh, life circumstances are basically they are incidents incidental, you mostly uh, do not choose them, uh, they are incidental, uh, but uh, and relatively stable life circumstances do not change so often, we can change obviously, uh, the some aspect of it, uh, but they generally do not change so often. So, life circumstances basically means that, so these are uh, certain stable facts of our life. Uh, but these are mostly incidental, uh, we do not choose most of them. So, according to uh, Leibomirsky and her colleague, happiness relevant circumstances, so various circumstances, life circumstances may in include uh, the national, geographic and cultural region of residence, where what is your national, uh, geographic or cultural you know, uh, location, where you, you took birth or where you were residing. So, this is this is also one aspect of your life circumstances. Uh, demographic factors such as age, gender, ethnicity, these are also your life circumstances. Uh, what is your gender, what is your ethnicity, what is the age group which may change slowly, uh, but these are some of the things that determines your life circumstances. Individual personal history such as experience of past trauma accidents, these are also incidental thing that happens in our life, some accidents, some traumatic events that happens, these are also part of our life circumstances. Uh, then uh, the st uh, life status variables are also included in the life circumstances, such as your marital status, uh, your income, your health, your religious affiliation, all these are also part of your life circumstances. So, if you see uh, most of them are kind of incidental, uh, but generally they are stable facts of our life. So, uh, generally the research shows the uh, life circumstances which are most consistently you know related to high subjective well-being or happiness are uh, being married, at least uh, some of the research shows in uh, western countries. Uh, that uh, being married also consistently predict high subjective well-being. Uh, being religious also could also increase your subjective well-being because many people you know seek their happiness from religion. So, certain uh, they pursue certain uh, moral values and uh, know, certain lifestyle which may enhance happiness level. Being employed is obviously an important factor which is uh, which predict high subjective well-being. Uh, being healthy is also very important, your physical health uh, as well as mental health, uh, these are very important uh, uh, predictor of subjective well-being. Uh, 
uh, then sufficient wealth to meet basic needs. So, your income, uh, if it is sufficient to meet your basic needs of your life, then it is also very important predictor of your uh, subjective well-being so, or it predicts high subjective well-being. So, these are some of the important factors which may be connected to your life circumstances uh, and they predict high subjective well-being or happiness. So, generally a lot of research shows that uh, obviously, uh, life circumstances plays important role in our happiness level or in our subjective well-being, uh, but uh, most of the research shows their contribution is not very high. They are not very strongly connected and the contribution to happiness level at least a lot of research indicates that it is not very high. So, all life circumstances combined account for very small percentages of variance uh, happiness level of 8 to 15 percent some research indicates. So, uh, different uh, researches in different population indicate that life circumstances contributes to happiness level, but uh, the contribution is not very strong. It could be from 8 to 15 percent. Uh, which is a kind of counter intuitive because idea because you know m uh, many of us generally think our life circumstances are really very important in terms of determining our happiness level. Uh, so, and many people you know constantly seek to change their life circumstances which is okay, uh, but actually they do not contribute much to our happiness level as, as at least uh, research indicates that. Uh, one of the reason why this could be uh, 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 the possible uh, reasons for finding uh, is that you know uh, why life circumstances do not contribute much to our happiness level. One of the reason could be hedonic adaptation to life circumstances. People seems to adapt to life circumstances very quickly uh, you know either it is either positive or negative life circumstances uh, because these are generally constant facts of your life. You cannot really do much. Obviously, certain life circumstances can be changed and it takes time, but some certain li life circumstances are given to you and you cannot change them. So, once few certain things are kind of a constant background, uh, we generally get adapted to them for how much time you can really you know worry about it or you know become very happy about it. So, after sometimes we generally get adapted to it and we, it does not really uh, you know bother us much. Uh, so, we get adapted to them. So, because of hedonic adaptation to life circumstances, uh, we uh, generally they do not contribute much. Although, you know uh, there is a potential for life circumstances to contribute uh, to our happiness level much, but because of hedonic adaptation uh, positively uh, it, the contribution is not that high. So, both genetic set point and life circumstances are lar not large uh, they are largely not in our control we cannot really do much about it so uh, to increase our happiness level we cannot really um, do much intervention in these two areas uh, in the genetic set point uh, genetic aspect and in the life circumstances also uh, not much can be done Although some uh, circumstances can be changed, like certain life circumstances obviously we can change for example, income, uh, you may change your location of your residence. So, certain things obviously we can do, there is no doubt about it, but the problem is a uh, lot of these life uh, circumstances even if we change, there is a possibility of hedonic adaptation. So, we may again get adapted to newer life circumstances. So, after certain time it may not really make much contribution to our sense of happiness or well-being. So, uh, uh, we cannot do much in terms of these two aspects genetic set point and life circumstances, uh, but obviously uh, certain changes in life circumstances we can change them and obviously it can do certain uh, contribute positively, but it may not be very strong and very long lasting. So, one last component in the uh, sustainable happy, happiness model is called as intentional activities. Uh, according to uh, according to them, uh, according to the uh, no, Sonja and her colleagues who proposed the model, they say this intentional activity is one particular aspect where uh, which gives a fruitful avenues for our pursuit of happiness. This is one area which is more in our control and we can do lot about it in terms of changing our happiness level or pursuing happiness level. So, let us see what is this intentional activities. 
So, intentional activities by definition means activities that we do either at the action level or at the thought level and which are you know intentional means you do it with your choice and effort. So, that is why it is intentional you need to do something about it, it will not happen automatically. So, intentional activities are effortful actions or practices that include variety of things people think and do. So, various thought processes and various actions that we do in our life which are intentionally effortful activities that we do or practices that we do are all collectively can be called as intentional activities. So, intentional um, uh, means effortful or people choose to engage them. So, we choose to engage in them, it is not something that is automatically will happen just like life circumstances are mostly and it is given to us. So, intentional uh, activities does not happen by itself, so, it will not happen, you have to do and engage in it. Uh, it needs conscious effort, uh, uh, Leibomitsky uh, at and uh, her colleagues in their model uh, posited that life circumstances happen to people, because they generally we find ourselves in certain life circumstances, but intentional activities are ways that people act on their circumstances. So, how do we how do we act and think about those life circumstances that is intentional activities. So, it, 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 it is more intentional and conscious efforts that we do and, and it is not given. So, we need to do something about it. So, intentional activities by definition uh, they are intentional we do it on our own volition and control. So, it these are more controllable than genetic factors and and personality and and life circumstances. Genetics, personality and life circumstances we do not have much control over them, but intentional activity is something that we have lot of control over it, because we are doing it and it, it offers the greatest potential for sustainably increase our happiness. And this is one area where we can really do lot of intervention in terms of increasing our happiness level. So, uh, um, uh, if you can summarize uh, that uh, intentional activities characteristics of intentional activities are so intentional activities are <coughs> One thing is they are effortful, we choose to engage they are conscious they are controllable. offers potential to sustainably increase happiness. So, these are some of the characteristics that we have discussed of intentional activities. So, we do lot of intentional activities in our life throughout the day. So, uh, so intentional activities uh, can be of different kinds and different varieties of activities we can do. So, uh, we should remember not all intentional activities will lead to increase in happiness, we should understand intentional activities can lead to suffering also and can lead to uh, you know uh, increase in happiness level depending on what type of activities you do. So, intention certain uh, those research indicates that certain types of intentional activities are beneficial for enhancing our subjective well being or well being in general. Uh, so, we will look into when we are we are talking about intentional activities here we are typically talking in terms of increasing happiness level. So, those kind of intentional activities uh, we are specifically focusing on. So, uh, intentional activities can be of different types as I said. Uh, so, in their model they describe you know th intentional activities can be of three types. 
one is you know behavioral activity that is a activities or actions that we do intentional activities can be at the action level uh, so behavioral activities reflect person's action actions different kinds of actions such as physical activities one can do meditation mindfulness social activities um, acts of kindness gratitude so different types of actions that we do um, uh, uh, and uh, uh, they may influence our sense of happiness so all these uh, particular activities that we have here you know various physical activities it could include exercises uh, meditation mindfulness social activities uh, pro social activities um, acts of kindness gratitude all this at the behavioral level uh, you know research indicates all these kinds types of activities can lead to higher uh, happiness or subjective well being now uh, intentional activities can be also cognitive level at the cognitive activity means at the thought level or different kinds of thoughts and attitudes that we take in our life they also influences our happiness level uh, it could include you know cultivating gratitude forgiveness at the thought level one can cultivate you know sense of gratitude sense of forgiveness uh, then various you know thought processes it could be in you know, a positive thinking uh, various uh, thought processes that can lead to coping with it, various adversities and crises of life all this can be cognitive activities so at the thought level different activities that we do and we have discussed uh, uh, thought how thoughts can influence our emotions and how can uh, thoughts be used to cope with adversities and stressful life in detail in the in one of the past lecture so uh, some of this uh, cognitive activity are, are found to increase subjective well being third level of uh, uh, type of intentional activity are called as volitional activity so volitional activity basically means uh, the different types of uh, motivating motivation towards you know pursuing and achieving goals pursuing and achieving goals uh, can also influence our happiness level particularly goals that are you know uh, that are intrinsic to us uh, that are in line with our intrinsic motivation intrinsic values uh, the pursuit of such goal always you know seems to uh, increase uh, our sense of subjective well-being or happiness so one volitional activity which could uh, be you know in line with our you know intrinsic motivation could be let's say you are highly interested or intrinsically interested to pursue creative activity such as let's say painting or writing so if you set certain goals in those direction of creative activity such as you know uh, painting something or you know writing some book or something uh, so if you pursue those kind of goal because you are interested into those kind of goal intrinsically and not just given from outside order or something then pursuing such goals uh, really increases our sense of happiness so volitional activity could include those kind of activities pursuit of certain goals uh, so briefly we can kind of show it like this intentional activities here can be of three types so types of intentional activity may include behavioral uh, which basically means actions such as acts of kindness i will discuss more in detail about some of this uh, intentional activities very specifically such as acts of kindness and gratitude we'll have separate lectures on each of this so i'm no, i so i'm not explaining them now <clears throat> so behavioral may include actions such as acts of kindness cognitive uh, intentional activities may include thoughts and attitudes
such as cultivating forgiveness at the thought level or positive thinking could be also another example. And the last type is volitional. Volitional basically means pursuing and achieving goals. such as self concord and goals so self con 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 concordant goal basically means goals which are in line with your intrinsic values and motivation any goals that you really like to achieve you know not because of some external reason but uh, simply you know you intrinsically value them or like them so, pursuing such goals are uh, found to be very important in terms of enhancing our subjective well-being. So, intentional activities can be of different types and categories. Um, some criticism to this happiness pie chart model that we have discussed. No? So, I will just briefly talk about uh, some criticisms that are there for this pie chart model no? that we have shown. No? 50 percent genetic set point and 10 percent life circumstances, 40 percent intentional activities. Some researchers criticize this, you know, talking in terms of specific percentages uh, may not be appropriate. So, some criticisms are, I uh, will just discuss very briefly about them. Brown and Rohrer in 2019, they made a critical evaluation of that and they basically indicated the following important points. One is, you know, between subject variance uh, versus within subject variance that this thing, two things were mixed up together in that model. So, basically happiness pi model uh, mixed up bet uh, between subject variance with within subject variance basically means what? Most of these percentages that, uh, you know, for example, 50 percent uh, is contributed by genetics. Uh, these percentages are generally shown in the population level or between subject, no different populations and um, samples from there this percentage was taken. Uh, uh, so, mostly it is between subject kind of thing and uh, when it was shown in the model, it was uh, shown as if it is, if, if you take one individual, 50 percent will be uh, you know determined by genetics and 10 percent will be by uh, life circumstances. So, it was kind of within subject shown more in terms of within subject. So, the mixing two things may not be appropriate. So, this was one of the criticism it was given. So, variation within a population. Uh, so, most of this percentage are taken as a from the population variance cannot be translated at the individual level. So, for example, 10 percent of the between subject variance in happiness can be explained by life circumstances it is at the population level is not same as 10 percent of a person's variance in the happiness can be explained by that person's life circumstances. So, this percentage can be true in the population level, but may be may not be true in the individual level. Individual level that life circumstances may not exactly contribute to 10 percent. So, this was mixed in that uh, model. So, this was one of the criticism. Second is, you know, the model considered all the three factors as independent. So, they kind of conceptualize all the three factors of happiness pie chart as independent and additive factors. So, they are considered like independent factors that contribute to happiness and they can be added together to uh, lead to 100 percent percentage. That may not be true uh, because um, in real life, they said all the three factors may interact and covery to influence happiness. So, in real life, all these three are not may, may not be separately acting on us, but they inf they kind of interact with each other and then influence. So, exactly saying this is causing this much percentage, this is causing this much percentage may not be true in our li real life situation. So, for example, genetic factors may interact with circumstantial and volitional activities to influence our happiness level. So, all these three factors may actually interact with each other and then determine rather than individually determining happiness level. And uh, the third criticism is uh, uh, the estimates are taken from different sources. So, happiness pi model uh, took the estimates of variance explained by genetic factors and life circumstances from different sources. It is not from just one sample or one particular individual and different populations. 
So, therefore, combining them together and adding them as 100 percent may, may be erroneous or may not be appropriate. So, these are some of the um, uh, criticism to that uh, no, showing a criticism not to the model itself, but criticism specifically to uh, showing specific percentages in terms of uh, no, contributory percentages to happiness level. Uh, so, uh, the original uh, uh, the researcher who proposed uh, Sonja Leibomirsky and Sheldon and uh, other, uh, they, they kind of already indicated in their model that you know they are they are not saying that these percentages are exactly you know the percentage uh, that can uh, that should be taken as very literally, but they are more indicative kind of percentages. So, they accept this criticism and uh, f, uh, and they kind of indicated it in their model itself that it these are indicative and approximate rather than actual. Uh, so, they already said they may not be exact. So, the basic however, the basic idea of sustainable happiness model still uh, can be very significant and important in terms of giving insight to understanding and increasing our happiness level. So, the three important components or factors that contribute to our happiness level is uh, various research shows they are very important and they are, are major factors in determining our happiness level. So, the factors are very important there is no doubt about it and lot of research evidences are there. Uh, so, the basic idea is there idea is true about this model and particularly that we can enhance our happiness level. Uh, by doing intentional activity is something uh, a lot of research already uh, showed evidence towards that. So, the basic idea that it is possible for people to influence their own happiness uh, by intentional activity is correct and it was kind of shown uh, into dif in, in different studies. So, as it is clear that our happiness is not completely determined by genetics and life circumstances that is also true. Uh, it will be true for every individual also and even the population also that it is not completely determined by our genetics or life circumstances. So, we can at least you know um, explain these fluctuations or the remaining uh, factors by uh, our intentional activities. Uh, it is a logical source to influence our fluctuations in happiness level. So, if happiness level keeps on fluctuation fluctuating uh, from time to time. So, there may be uh, some many intentional factors involved in it. So, intentional factors can contribute to our happiness level. Uh, so, it may not be exactly that percentage, but this is an important factor and uh, it can give an important you know area or, or area of intervention. So, uh, the, so we can learn uh, so at least the percentage part is kind of criticized, uh, but from the sustainable happiness model at least indicates important factors and that happiness fluctuates in our life and uh, it is the intentional activity that contributes to those fluctuations and uh, we can intervene uh, one of the important aspects of intervention for increasing our happiness or well being could be intentional activities at least lot of research indicates that. So, we will look more into uh, uh, this intentional activity part because this is this has a lot of applied implication in our life. In the next lecture also we will talk about uh, the important aspects of intentional activities and beyond that uh, in uh, upcoming lectures we will talk specific intentional activities that research found to be important in terms of facilitating uh, subjective well-being and happiness. So, we will talk specifically let us say uh, for example, you know, practicing gratitude, acts of kindness, you know uh, practicing our you know <coughs> our signature strengths etcetera etcetera. We will look very specifically. Uh, certain areas where we can work and increase our happiness level. So, with this I will end today's lecture. Mm, thank you.